The popular understanding of how Darwin came to his ideas in the Galapagos has been the myth of the finches. Um, the idea that Darwin went to the Galapagos, he saw all these finches, he saw all the different beak sizes and he had a eureka moment um, where everything about evolution came to him. It really didn't happen like that. He did see the finches, but he didn't really know what to make of them. It was another bird that he saw uh, in the Galapagos that really started him thinking, and that bird was the mockingbird. These are the mockingbirds collected by Darwin on the voyage of the Beagle. These six here are the birds from South America, so Chile, Argentina. And you can see they're mostly sort of dull brown medium birds. Then over here we have four birds from the Galapagos, one from each of the islands that Darwin visited. When he came to the first of those islands, Chatham Island, he came across this bird, which he immediately recognised as being very similar to the birds he'd already seen in South America. But it was only really when he came to the second island, Floriana, the real surprise was waiting. He saw this bird and it struck him immediately that this is a very different bird. It's, it's bigger, it has this uh, dark chest, the bill is, is quite long and uh, what he realised is the differences he was seeing in the Galapagos between the birds were greater between birds from these islands very close to each other than really he'd seen over the whole of South America and that really made him start thinking. These are Darwin's notes, the notes that he made about all his Galapagos specimens as he was sailing away from Galapagos. He writes about the mockingbirds. I have specimens from four of the larger islands. In each island, each kind is exclusively found. The habits of all are indistinguishable. When I see these islands in sight of each other and possessed of but a scanty stock of animals, tenanted by these birds but slightly differing in structure and filling the same place in nature, I must suspect they are only varieties. The only fact of a similar kind of which I am aware is the constant asserted difference between the wolf-like fox of East and West Falkland Islands. If there is the slightest foundation for these remarks, the zoology of archipelagos will be well worth examining, for such facts would undermine the stability of species. And that is the point at which Darwin first suggests the possibility that species might change, the key insight for what was to become his theory of evolution by natural selection. When the beagle came to Galapagos, mockingbirds were very common on all of the islands that Darwin visited. Sometime after then, before 1880, they became extinct on Floriana by some force we know not what. One hundred and seventy-three years after Darwin collected his mockingbird specimens on Floriana, those specimens are being used to help in a very important conservation project to reintroduce Floriana mockingbirds onto the island. The research teams that are currently working on the conservation want to know more about the history of the bird before it went extinct on that island. And so what they really needed to find out was more about the DNA. And so what's been done is each bird has had a toe pad removed. You can just see where the sample was taken right at the end of my finger.
Well, the DNA that we're looking at here from these historic specimens should give us an idea of what the genetic profiles of the original population on Floriana was. We're hoping to use the genetic profiles from the old specimens to help us select birds from the remaining populations to reintroduce onto the old island. But we also want to maximize the genetic diversity of the reintroduced birds in order to ensure survival. Our preliminary results are really promising. It looks like not only have we got usable DNA from the footpads, but also these historic specimens share genetic markers in common with the birds surviving on the satellite islands. The whole project, of which this is a very important part, is a simply wonderful combination of historical material with the use of cutting-edge investigative techniques. Science and history come together and will help in the preservation of a unique species for our understanding of life on Earth.